Hi everyone, welcome to the session on CPSN certification journey with Krishan exam three. When we are talking of exam three, I'm talking of leadership and transformation. You see the two words around here. One, it focuses on leadership. Actually, it goes more than leadership. It says leadership and business acumen and transformation. And the transformation has become much more prominent during the COVID-19. So those who will be appearing for exam three, some questions could relate to crisis situation. One should not say, oh, I never read this in the book around. So same common concepts could apply for COVID-19. So this is what we are going to do around the objective which I've kept for this journey is much different than what we have done in the past. I want you to learn the master the body of the knowledge, the whole subject knowledge you have to understand so that you could become a strategic leader of supply. Demand. The word is leader and the lead, another term is a manager. All manager may not be leader. They know how to manage as per the terms of reference, as per the job description, get this done, get this done, ensure this compliance and does it. But leaders goes one step further than that. I know many of us have been to the business school. So in the business school, we learn the various management theories around. Those management theories are in generic way. But when we talk of a supply managers, supply chain managers, leadership requires a different type of attributes, I would call. Now, coming back to the exam part, I would say to pass any exam, anything in the life, even in your career also, always needs strategy. Nothing comes automatically. So you need to develop the strategy to prepare the exams and have advanced knowledge. I'm not saying the word knowledge, I'm saying advanced skills around. Advanced means that you have picked up the, you've got the definition, but you don't know how to apply it. That's where I'm calling the word advanced skill or advanced knowledge. But understand end-to-end -end concepts around. Sometimes we ask the person, okay guys, do you know what is, supply chain strategy, procurement strategy, they will tell us X strategy, Y strategy. Then I've got another question relating to negotiation. I've got another question relating to contract management. How do I connect the two together? So you have to keep in mind the question which will come in the exams, they're application based. They're not per se from one particular chapters. The major focus may be that chapter, but then they're all connected issues around. So concepts are related one way. Now, when we talk of exam three, broadly, I would say it focuses on six competencies. So if I say six competency out of them, three are in one way, another way they're related to leadership and business equipment. So if I say leadership and business equipment is a one competency. So we are covering leadership and business equipment. We're covering risk management. The risk management has become much more prominent after COVID-19. Then we're talking about the CSR and the technology. We are talking of corporate social responsibility. Nowadays, you know, many of the big companies is a must. Plus ethics also. I'll touch on that part also. What exactly is ethics? And lastly, but not the least, when we're talking of the word transformation, if I don't use the word technology, then transformation has no meaning. Transform whom? Transform the mindset of the people to give them the business knowledge around the technological part, how my life could become easier and faster. And there are 34 tasks. If those of you who are going as per the study guide, there are 34 tasks. You may call sub-competencies. The questions could come from each task. So what I have done in this preparation, in this presentation, I have taken all the 34 tasks. Because the way we used to prepare in the US when I did my business school there and worked there for so many years, each task, then what we do is we look at the key points here. I know in the school, colleges, you guys have been also making the flashcard, the notes. The same thing there, we use the word flashcards. 
The only beautiful thing in flashcard, I will use different colors depending on the importance part. So I could have one flashcard or three flashcards for each sub competencies. So I will be walking through in the same approach. Each sub competency, I put down the key headings around. I will try to explain you the concepts in a, whatever next 60 minutes. So I expect after this, you should be aware of the whole strategy of you to prepare for the exams. The key concepts, you should do it. Look around 350 pages, I'll be covering in only 60 minutes. So I will touch all sub competencies, all 34 tasks, and each task I'll try to give you my key points around to remember. So this is what I'm planning to walk through with you. So next 60 minutes, I'll focus on this and followed by Q&A. Now the learning objective broadly, there might be many headings around the main thing is to gain the knowledge. The focus is on knowledge here and understanding the key concepts. A little bit about strategy, I'm covering it, but that I think is a very important enough. Coming back to evolutions, I don't need to say much. I think I've covered in exam one, two, same story around, not a major change. About CPSM, again, I would like to emphasize is one of the best certification. I know there are three global certifications. So this is one of the best one. The reason I would say this exam three, the leadership part, none of them covers anything. This is the only one which covers a lot about leadership and technology. So this, I think, differentiates this program from others. Coming back to the certifications, why part? I think all of you know that's why you're joining. It's a milestone for those professionals who wish to promote their career setup. Career does not mean only by getting a certificate. Career means that you have understood the subject and you are able to apply these ideas into your day-to-day -day life. The path to success in the journey, if I say the very first thing I expect every one of you, before even you start reading the books around, assess your knowledge on each subject. Before I start reading the book and where to focus, where not to focus, where I'm strong, where I'm weak, assess your knowledge based on the diagnostic kit. Then start focusing on where you're very weak. And then study the things around and practice, practice, practice. The reason of practice is that sometimes we're not used to the way questions are structured in English. We are not used to those if you studied in India. So I would say if you do it, practice a few times, you get used to the style of the questions around. What does it mean actually? So your time will be saved. So many of you have a time management problem in these questions. So once you practice it, you get used to the questions. And you are able to pinpoint the st story is this, choices are four, and then you will say out of four choices, two are not even related to the subject. So you are able to narrow down your choices from four to two. So saves your time. So time management becomes better. Lastly, but not the least, I would say practice part. We should do also online tests with our help of our office. Until you get 80 person, don't register for exam. Otherwise, you'll be wasting your money for registration. Exam fee is very high. So please practice. And until you are sure, once you are sure, go for it. Well, friend, with this, let me start now each task by task. And But before that, I think I want to give you some strategical issue. You can look around. There are six competencies. Out of it, three belongs one, two, three belongs to leadership. Actually, the full word is leadership and business acumen. I've just cut short, but so leadership and business acumen, strategy development, obviously you're the leader. You have to develop the strategy for the whole department, not for your own, but for your whole team. You're the leader. You've got 100 people, 200 people, 10 people, five, whatever they are reporting to you, you need to develop the strategy. What do you want to achieve? And that strategy has to be aligned with the corporate strategy. Second leadership issue is you are not alone. Your success depends on the stakeholders. You can't say, I am the smartest guy. You can do everything. No, you have to carry the team with you. You have to carry the stakeholders. Stakeholders could be inside, 
stakeholders could be outside. Outside could be your suppliers. Outside could be my shareholders. Inside could be my marketing people. Inside could be my, my HR people, my finance people, my design people, everybody around. The next one comes people development. Since you are the leader, you have to develop your team. Development is wonderful idea, send them for training. They say, oh, I'll send my people for training. But for some people, you need a coaching one-to-one -one basis. Training is fine. You send them into a five-star hotel, go and do some training. But how much they're picked around? But sometimes giving a guidance to someone, you read someone text, you call the guy, come on, sit with me. This is not the way to do it. You coach the person. So you have to do that type of coaching one-to-one -one basis as well. If you want people to be productive for you. Now, if you look at the number of questions, 18 questions plus 25 plus 39. So you can imagine this covers 66 percent of 150. So around 62 questions. Sorry, 72 questions out of one. So these questions, I think, sorry, 72 questions out of 150 in the very first three. For well, these three, you can imagine it is around 56, quite a big percentage part of it. So leadership to a lot extent is common sense also. And I think it should be very easy to absorb. And those who are already in the leadership role, sometimes they can, I've seen people, they say, I am I'm left my day-to-day -day routine thing for the last 10 years. I'm the leader of the team. So they will start with exam three first. And I always encourage them, guys, don't go to exam one, go to exam three. You don't follow sequence like that. If I've been doing leadership role for 20 years, this should be very small thing to, for me to pass the exam. So I will go with that. System capability. This is the area which is new for many people. For some people who are very good tech savvy, this is nothing big trying to see what changes have come in the technology and what new are going to come. Some people, when we talk of technology, they only talk of ERP. ERP, I remember the time, since I have implemented globally in 2005, it's not a big thing. There are many other things which has come up around. I'll touch on those part. Risk management and compliance. This is equally important for the leaders. Anything you do has a risk. Risk could happen, supplier is not going to deliver you. Supplier company has gone to financial debt. And the quality is poor. So risk could be many things. And compliance. Sometimes you might not have followed the standard operating procedures because you were under pressure. Under pressure, you're given a contract to someone, go ahead, do it. I'll take care. But then when the audit comes, they say, guy, you didn't follow the rules. It becomes the compliance issue. So compliance part, the audit part, and the risk part. And the last but not the least is corporate social responsibility. The society we belong to, the people for whom we, we, with whom we work around, taking care of society. You are not away from society, keep in mind. And last but not the least, ethics part. And I'll try to explain a little bit much more ethics later on because even when we go to the KG school or the grade one, we are taught some moral values. Our parents also teach us the moral values. It is a new terminology, I would say ethics, when we look from the corporate world. So if you see as a whole, first three 72 questions, relating to leadership. Again, common sense, let me put it very honestly. Corporate social responsibility and ethics is also common sense. So if you once you read the professional guide and the study guide, this should be easy. Risk management, I can understand around, but once you understand, so you can imagine around, this is an easy subject to do and pass very well. But you need to understand very well. That's the key thing. That's what my task would be in the next 60 minutes, whatever time I get, I'll try to clarify this. I hope it gives you the strategy, what to focus and where to focus.
Let me start with the leadership journey because 72 questions belong to this journey. Let me give you the broad understanding of leadership. Leaders means they're having a vision of the department. What I want my department to be. If you're working, let's say, in an e-commerce company and dealing with supply chain, and your vision is, guys, I want to be like an Amazon in India. When you're trying to compare yourself, you have vision there. Then based on vision, you make a mission. And based on mission, you make a strategy, guys. Thinking big is very good. The guy vision is looking at the stars. Great. You know very well. All of us dream big things, but nothing comes automatically until we struggle, until we dirty our hands. So vision has to be converted to strategy. So strategy also, you need to do the direction. You have to navigate at the end of the day. I have developed a strategy. I'll do this, I'll do this. But then I have to navigate. And you can't do alone. You need a team. You need to communicate. Some people will resist what you're saying. You should be a very good communicator. The days are gone when you were treated like a boss and people will fall in line what you say. But does not mean they accept you. So you have to good to, good to communicate. You need to have goals. And you should have solution also after time, today's technology. If my people are doing in an old fashioned way, you don't bring any new ideas around, new innovative things around in the operation part, new standard operating procedure, new guidance around, new technologies around, you're not a leader then. But then you have to guide them also. You can mentor them also. So this is broadly what we look around from the leadership. I hope it gives you a glimpse of what leadership is around. Well, let me also clarify a little bit about leadership versus management. I know we use the word interchangeably, but they are not same. I think as a leader, you need something more than that. Both are managing the resources. I'm a manager, very good managers. I do what is given to me as a job description at the end of the year. Tick, tick, tick. I do everything as per the points. But I may not be the good leaders. My team may not be happy with me. I'm not able to bring new innovative ideas around. I'm only able to comply what is given to me, the task. I'm a taskmaster, nothing more than that. I don't get the best out of my staff around. I don't care for them. I don't have any empathy for them. So you should be inspiring person. So that differentiates both are managing the resources, but as a leader, you are inspiring your team. So that is becoming much more important now when we're dealing with generation, the new generations around, you may call Z generation or X generation, the millennials. I think this concept is changing. Leadership, the very first line I'm again saying around, inspire people. Empower your team. Don't take away, don't delegate them as much you can. Don't get scared that they will take away your job. No. Empower them. Share the vision. Let them know what exactly you're planning to do in the next 10 years, 5 years. And they lead the chain. Some people will not like to change. They are very complacent what is going on. Until we change the mindset of the people, very difficult. Because I'm going to doing, oh, that's how I'm doing for last 20 years. Don't teach me. But the world needs change. So this is where I'm spend a little bit more time on the leadership term before I go into the depth part of it. The business acumen also, since the subject is leadership and business acumen. In a one line, if I say the business acumen means knowing about the money part. No business can work just by pleasing people. I could be a leader, please everybody. Am I sustainable? Am I making my money or not? Am I bringing business money to the company or not? So business organizations, ultimately, you're not a charity organization, wherever you work. You have to understand how your business operates and makes money. That's a key thing. I've seen many people who become wonderful leaders. They want to please everybody around. They'll increase the salary of everybody double. But from where the money will come? Is the operation going to be sustainable or not? So that part also has to be called business acumen. We always use this word, guys, 
these guys understand the business world. So you might be a wonderful leader, but you have to have acumen for the business. That means you have to know the organization drivers, what drives the organization, external factor which could affect you, and the future trends, what is going on in the world. I meet many business people around. They were doing so well export business around. Before COVID-19, now their business has gone to zero. Maybe negligible. Because the global economy is in a bad shape. So, but now they are not finding any venue and they are only grumbling, that's all. They're not finding a solution. So business acumen requires something more than that. This is again, I would say, attributes for the leadership. Obviously, the character is the first thing. Integrity, trust. People will not listen to you if you don't have integrity. Some managers may be crook guys, but they are not honest. They don't have values. They don't have authenticity. They don't have this. I would say if you want to be a leader, you might be doing good performance. I'm not questioning that. But do you have integrity? Do people trust you or not? That's very important. Because trust is very important in the life. You need to have talents. So naturally, without talents, you can't do much. Relationship, relationship, relationship. I won't have focused much on this 15, 20 years back, but now in the last 10 to 15 years, supply chain is becoming a cross function. And if you don't know how to deal with 100 people who are in the chain, I think you need to learn the skill of relationship. So that's the one. It should come naturally how to build with them. Emotional intelligence. In the past, we never care for emotion. We always said the guys, oh, wonderful IQ. I might be having a wonderful IQ, but I don't have an emotional IQ. Emotional intelligence, my quotient is very small. I don't read people. I only care myself. I'm very self-centered then. So you have to have a very good IQ. I'm not questioning it. But on top of it, you also need to have emotional intelligence, read other people around, have empathy with them. Lastly, but not the least, is competency, competency, competency. That also is very important. So this all makes you a wonderful leader. If you understood this, I think when I go through each task, you should be able to answer all this. So these four or five slides, I would say each one of you should remember it fully. Then you're learning the whole, like, I would say whatever 72 questions will be very easy to answer. Let me go with the very first one, strategy development. So this is the very first one in the leadership and business acumen. You can see the four bullets here. So four bullets are nothing but four tasks. Each task in the book may be running in 10, 15 pages. So very first task is participate in organization by objective setting. You want to set your objective. But objective is, if you look at the chain, starts from vision, mission, strategy, then you make your goals and then you make your objectives and plan. Now the vision is the highest level. The vision is that you want to be the best programmer in the world. You want to be the best in this. But why do you want to be mission? What is the purpose? Why? Vision you have. I want to be the top e-commerce company. Great. You give example also. I want to be like this. But then the mission is, I want to serve the customers. Vision is one thing, but the mission is, I want to make the best car. I want my customers to be happy with my product. If we are doing a training part of it, I want you all to be very happy that you have learned something from this program. That's my mission. So that part is most important around which people get accepted it. Strategy. Now to do this, now the program which I'm doing with you today, my mission is that you should be happy and you should have more success rate in the exam. The strategy what I followed around was, I think we have never done like this in the past, except I've done for exam one and now this is for three. I've taken up the, what we call as flashcards. So I've taken up the flashcards and now those flashcards I'm trying to explain to you guys. That's what we do. 
So I hope you got the concept of vision, mission statements around. So the vision statements represents the overarching purpose of the organization. The mission statement indicates where the organization wants to go for the purpose. And the mission statement would address easy questions like this. Who are we? Whose need do we need to meet around? If I look at my mission, what is my mission in this around? My job is that you should get the knowledge from this one hour. If you don't learn something from this in one hour, I'll be failing in my duty. Let me be honest with you. This is why normally we ask for the feedback. So if you're not feeling that you are not learned anything from this program is not helping in the exam, maybe something is missing in our life. So that's what we look at. So mission part, this part. Another one I will look around, the second one is participate in organization by budgeting. So this is your second task. Now, when you are the leader, you have to make a budget. Because at the end of the day, what we are looking around is, you money makes the mayor go, let's be honest. You might have wonderful ideas. You need to have funds for that. Now, we have signed recently agreement with Government of India, World Bank, and many other banks around, Asian Development Bank, for setting up a membership. Now, to do that, you need funding for that. So keep in mind that budgeting is very, very important. So your own department, you should have a budget. And budget should be commensurate with the output. How much is the cost of the department? Today? The third task which you will find in this book is, develop, implement, revise, support business plan. So you need to develop your SOPs, standard operating procedures. You need to develop business plan around. Business plan is very boring, let me put it this way. I can write down 40 activities for you, but how to complete? What is my strategy to complete? I may ask you after one week, what has happened? You will be still at the same level. But then you have to make strategy because everything might be too many things in your hand. Nothing will get complete, multitask. So you have to plan, guys. Today, I'm not going to do anything. This is my A activities around, top priority activities. I'll focus today only on this. Let me get out of this. Or someday you say, guys, I've got small, small activities around. Let me focus so my number become less. So you have to develop your own strategy, how to complete the activities. Participate in company mergers, which I know if I look good old days, Government people, supply chain people were never involved in this. Now when companies are merging together, you are acquiring the companies, you feel the supplier is becoming a pain in my neck. Let's acquire the company. Or sometimes your own product is not relevant today in the market. You say, guy, let divest it. So you want to divest this around. So you're trying to become either vertically integrated or you want to get horizontally integrated, or you want to diversify, anything's around. Since you know the pulse of the supplier, you know which company we should acquire, I think as a supply manager, you can play a key role. I can say still not many companies are using the supply chain people in this, but time is coming. This becomes a very important function to them. Okay, this one we have touched already part. Another thing is stakeholder, because the next session I'm going to talk about is the stakeholder grid now. You have stakeholders. Keep in mind, stakeholders could be external and internal. Where do you want, where you have the power of the stakeholders and where you have interest in them? Two things, you have interest these are stakeholders very important to me. But then there are some people who are very powerful. Their word is heard. But they may not be of much interest to you. So those which where you have an interest, they are powerful, you have to manage very closely. In some cases, could be the finance people. Sometimes could be your own boss. You have to manage them closely. Then there are some stakeholders where you have an interest, but they are not very powerful. Your colleagues in other departments around, you want to keep them informed. Everything what you're doing. Then there are people with who doesn't have power also, but they could be pain. 
in your problem. Whenever you come with a new suggestion, they'll try to create troubles. Interest of the stakeholders. So you may like to win it. And then there are people, they have power, maybe a finance guy. But you're not much interested because you know this guy has nothing to do with my subject, what I'm trying to do. So you keep them satisfied, convincing them this thing. So stakeholder grid, I'll go into more detail further. I just want to give you the glimpse of the whole grid, what stakeholder means. Around. So in the good old days, you never cared for it. But now if you're becoming a leader and it's becoming a cross-functional, you have to care for it. Where to focus more, where to focus less, you have to do it. But this is what it gives you around. Some typical I've taken from one of the companies. Like you see the one which are more critical is VP sales. Very important to me. My boss is very important to me. My colleagues who may create troubles for me. Lead generation, key player. They're the key players. Then there are people like finance and services sales, director HR. I meet their needs around. Least important could be IT support this. So I try to give you a typical example of one of the companies. Around. How as a leader, you try to segregate out. Because you might have 50 stakeholders. And you don't have a time to manage and please all 50. You draw the line. How do I manage this? So this is what it comes. Stakeholders engagement. Now same thing I'm going to explain now, task by task. Now very first task, there are three tasks in this one around supply management relationship with internal departments. You have to find what the roles they have. What are your goals around them? Does your goal conflict with them? Does your objectives, like your objective may be cost cutting. And cost cutting, you may say you have saved so much, but ultimately the finance guy has to support you. So you have to think of with whom to maintain what relation. Some places when you're working in a cross-functional, the CEO of the company will say, guys, I want to add more values. And I'm making a team of people, one from finance, one from supply, one from sales, you'll work together. And I want so-and-so savings. It's a joint accountability. And joint accountability, let's say you are the one who are leading it. You have to maintain the relationship with them. They don't report to you, but objective is common. That's what you need to do. The next one is lead, participate in cross-functional teams. Promote training. So sometimes, you know, you might be thinking these guys are dumb. They're not dumb. They don't understand your subject at all. So give them some briefing what you are doing and why you are doing. So that will help you a lot. Other things in the stakeholder engagement is communication, communication. Some leaders are wonderful people, they are smart people, they only know how to work on the desk. But they don't communicate over a lunch or coffee or meet the people around, explain them what your department is doing, seek their inputs around, make a newsletter around. So that type of things is important. Today, world is of communications, KPIs, influence them. So you have to think of a shifting paradigm. The next, I would say, the task which you will read in the book around is represent supply management meetings. Since many of your activities are also, particularly if you look from the corporate social responsibility, social responsibility, one comes up, if I've got a big plant, the local people are given me the land, they expect something from me. The government expects something from me. There could be legal issues around. I have to be very clear to represent my company. With them. So dealing with the government, dealing with the corporations, all the things like that. So this is the one I would say the paradigm shift. Primary value was cost reduction. Here is solving the business problems. And then I was very happy. Oh, I have saved so much. I'm the best leader. Great. That is okay. That is your part of the job. I'm not questioning it. Now you have to find the business problem which you are having around. You ought to have it. I have to think of supplier collaborations. I have to think of how do I work with them? How do I get innovative suppliers? And if suppliers are too much painful, can I acquire them around? So you have to think of new ideas around. Stakeholders compliance. But keep in mind, 
people should have a trust on you. That factor is nobody can teach you at all. If your stakeholders don't trust you at all, then they will not listen to you. Whatever you may go on saying, they'll close their ears around. So first thing is, anywhere you work, anywhere you join, build your trust in the team. The team should have a trust, your colleagues should have a trust, and your bosses should have a trust. Management focus. It's not about transactions alone. I've got 100 transactions done. The transactions can be done by robotic process automation also. I can do automation of transaction. But relationship, relationship, that my artificial intelligence can't do it. It has to be done by you. So that's the role changing around. I've got 100 contracts already. I can do with robotic process automation, P2P transaction automatically. That is not important to me. The relationship is important to me. Skills needed. In the good old days, it was all analytical. And now I can do analytical great, but what the business acumen, this analysis should give me some ideas around, will this help us to grow our business or not? So that's you need it. Management approach, own and execute. And now we are trying to say facilitate. Be enabler. That's what we're looking at. The last of the leadership, which is the one third one, you could say, as a part of the competencies, people development and coaching. First thing, all of you should know it. What type of structure to have? Should I follow a centralized structure, decentralized structures, hybrid structures? The plus and minus of each one. I remember the time when we were thinking of, if I go in 80s and 90s, everybody was saying, I've got 10 plants, guys, decentralized, don't be a problem for anybody. But now the technology has brought us together. When technology has brought us together, even today sitting here now, all of you might be in different places, it looks like we're sitting face to face. So when technology has brought us together, will centralized approach work? So many companies are switching over centralized approach for critical items. That's why they're saying strategic sourcing for They do it centralized place. I have 200 plants, worldwide I have spread around, but P2P I'm giving it to the countries. The follow-up I'm giving to the countries. The relationship I'm giving to the countries. But centralized, I do everything. So keep in mind there are plus and minus, each one has you can't copy each other. Each one is a different management structures around. So based on that, think of it. You could also have a category. If I got 100 products around, you could have say, guys, no, these products form under this category and you are the category head, irrespective where it is made. So you are the boss of the category. So I've seen people working in different country offices on technical matter, they report to one sitting in the headquarters. But for administrative purpose, they report the matrix is there. So there are many ways you could have functional divisions. You could have a matrix approach. You could have a category approach. Conduct the role evaluations. Each job is revising every time. And particularly after COVID-19, the jobs roles are changing. So you have to see around what we expect from this guy. Assuming that I'm trying to bring digitizations, the role might have changed. What are the functions? This I have to do the job design again. Then how this job is going to influence others? Around. So based on the job design, I'll make a specification. Now you got a job design. This guy will do this activity, this activity, this activity. Now to do this activity, I need a specs. Specs means skills. What skills I need? What basic education I need around? Do I really need experience around? Experience part is getting out of the windows also sometimes. Number of years, certainly few years counts a lot. Sometimes I've seen people come from such a background with wide range of experience, which is very outdated experience. The number may be more, but they've been doing for 20 years, same thing, again and again. On paper, it is 20 years, but technically it's a one year experience. So it depends how creative you are, how innovative you are. I think that counts much more. 
So number of years is slowly gain, losing its importance around. Develop criteria for evaluating supply management. You should have expectations. I'm sure all of you have KPIs, but you also have to check the maturity level of your department. We have developed a play, playbook on this. So any one of you who is a member of I, ISM, they can join our site and they can assess the maturity level of your department. Are you at a maturity level four out of five, three out of five, two out of five? What score are you are getting? So it's a very simple test, a psychometric test you can do. There's another one called balance code graphs. It was very popular, I would say, 10 years back. Still people are using it. But that's again to assess your function itself. The next thing comes the hiring of the people. Naturally, you need to hire the best people all the time. It's an ongoing job. Then you have to develop them. They might have come with experience from X company and Y company, but your expectations are different. So you have to develop them to suit your objectives around. And some people who are very good, you would like to retain them. You like to promote them, but then those who are bad, the bad apples could become problem for others. So those have to be dismissed. Then. It's a part of the game. Then the next thing comes again, next task is conduct job training. Now job training, I know we get requests from many of the companies around. They'll just give the name, we want a training on negotiation, we want a training on this, but nobody gives us what exactly they're expecting. Normally what we do around and we advise them guys, do the competency assessment. So based on the competency assessment, we will design the course content and then do the training. So we have to do that part of it. Evaluate implied performance, vertically also and horizontally also. People call 360 degree feedback. I was first time exposed to this concept, it was in 90s beginnings when I was in the US. Earlier, my exposure was my performance means my boss will only tell. No. Your performance will be also looked by boss as well as by colleagues, as well as your customers. What does customer talks about you? If my customer says, guys, this is the worst guy we have dealt around, very rude, they will score very badly with me. Nobody will know who has scored. So your scoring will be done by your peers. The scoring will be done by your bosses and scoring by your customer for whom you work. At the end of the day, now it's becoming more customer centric. If my customers are very happy, I'm getting more business. Sometimes the role of boss will also become less. At the end of the day, it is output. Supervise and lead staff. This is also important around I remember 70s and 80s, we used to have pyramids. I might be in the fifth layer. From fifth layer to fourth layer, fourth layer to third layer, I will only talk to one person. And this again, I learned in 90s in the US when things were falling apart, even the cabins were broken out. He said, guy, we don't need cabins for anybody. Let everybody sit open. Let people talk to each other. So the span became very horizontal. The span, vertical span was becoming totally high. And people were empowered. And when people are empowered, you could have many people reporting to them. You have to delegate them in all. That's what you become. Create and manage a succession plan. Certainly everybody should have a succession plan. In case X leaves, Y leaves, who's going to take over? So that part, I think we have to think around in the management squad. So this is again, I'll put two slides on this extra one, just to answer the question in case you get anything on COVID-19, which will happen. Let me be honest with you. These are not in your books. So this is again, study done by McKenzie. They have taken three farad, the, the last one, if you look around, the drivers of satisfaction, interpersonal relationship. Relationship with management become 86%. Relationship with co-workers. And if you look at the job satisfaction, which makes me my job happier, if I'm working in a company, my interpersonal relationship, job has to be interesting also. 
So these are the parameters which gives you the ideas around workplace, relationship, share of satisfaction, where you get maximum. If my management is not good, I go unhappy home. If my colleagues don't like me, again, I'm unhappy around. You want satisfaction every day. This is another thing which is again related to the COVID-19 we recently did for one. Guys, in the past, we were always looking forward looking. But now with COVID-19, I think in the last six months, and I'll say this will go on for some few more months, we're looking for the forward to grow, but we're also looking the backward also. The forward, what I'm looking around is, this guy is in between the two. He's trying to cross over from the bad days to the good days. But the good bad days have not gone for many companies. The financial crisis is there. So the, but does not mean the financial crisis, I'll only cry for the financial crisis. I have a vision for the future, but I'm also caring and humble with my existing issues around. My staff doesn't have the right functions around. You cannot just throw them out. I have to be empathy with them. I have to be the caring side of the personality. These people have been with us for many years. Now suddenly we say, guys, oh, we can't afford. So you have to be future looking as well as have empathy for the existing. So you have to be balanced all these things around under this present scenarios. So keep this in mind if any question comes on COVID-19, you have to be forward looking also and backward looking. Backward means you have to have empathy, be humble, be nice to your team around, caring side of the personalities. So you have two images, two faces. But you have a very caring person as well as you are inspiring them. They're telling, don't worry, the good days are coming. So you inspired them. I showed the team around. So that's why it shows you two, between the two parts around. Coming back to the next one. So I'm looking at the technology part. So we have covered the leadership part. So now I'm getting to the next, what we call on the system and technologies. Here I want to tell you a little bit first before I go to the detailed chapter. You have, if you go to 70s, we used to have material requirement planning, then became material requisitions plan, management plan, MRP1, MRP2, ERP came in 80s and 90s, and now I think most of the big companies have ERP. Now the next level became e -procurement. Here I would say very few companies have still gone into this. Those of you who have got separate software e-applications, like for ERFX, source to contract separate, P2P separate. But the next stage is procurement 4.0. That means you are becoming totally digital. You can imagine ERP is left behind. So when we check any companies around in technology wise, if they say, oh, we have got ERP fine, but if I had to rank you, you are still you know, procurement 2.0. E-procurement is procurement 3.0. Digital is procurement 4.0. So with this background, now let me get down to the subject. Systems, capability, and technology. All of us, we know procurement is fast chaining. Supply chain is fast chaining. We want visibility, visibility, visibility. You can't have visibility sitting in the room just like that. You need technology to help. So you need to integrate the digital transformation strategies and all. You need to have intelligent systems around which can, you got wide range of data around. If I ask you, can you give me the spreadsheet? Then the guy will print out and take three days to pull the spreadsheet, two days to analyze it. But you very well know, it's a very mechanical process. To pull the data, to make a spreadsheet is a mechanical. To analyze is also based on parameter, is very mechanical. If I can draw the formulas for that, I can develop an algorithmic for that. And that algorithmic will give me real time basis. I don't have to ask anybody. I'll press the button on my dashboard comes. Oh, last month, how much requests we got around, how much we replied, how much time it took to reply them, all are there on my dashboard. So the future managers, I would say, you have to be preparing yourself for that. So this is where artificial intelligence will become very important. Cyber security system because all of us are moving into the clouds now. Many of us. I remember my timings in 90s and 2000 also. We had a big room in the US. 
having our own servers and the air conditions kept very cool, a lot of people supporting it. Then we were all the time looking at security in case it dies system. Do I have a backup or not? So used to have backup somewhere else. Now slowly we started moving into the clouds. So from cloud, I have to take a system. Now cloud also, I need a cyber security much more. I am allowing suppliers to be connected with my system. How do I ensure that nobody hack away my system information? So cyber security is also becoming. So more we are becoming digital. So cyber security is also important. Big data is big data. So data are much bigger. Any one of you who are using ERP, I'm very confident that you must be placing thousands and thousands of orders, maybe on a daily, a monthly, depending on the size of the companies around. That data is just occupying space. Is anybody analyzing the data? And even if you ask someone to analyze, you need a team around and they'll give you a report after one month. You want data immediately. Last week, what type of orders we gave around? What happened to them? So you want the big data, the size is so big. The blockchain part is also picking up. So this is where the new technologies are coming up around and that will change your capability. Technology driven process to analyze data. So you need IOTs. IOT I've seen myself also being used in many places in transportation, particularly the food items, the pharma items, my ship is coming. I have the IOTs, Internet of Things. I have the sensors. I want to say that this should have maintained temperature of so much, humidity of so much. All that information is going to the cloud. And from cloud, I know very well how the shipment is going. Data analytics. Mining the data. Data is there in the ERP. How do I mine it? And dashboards. So I'm sure many of you must be having a dashboard. Like in the car, we have a dashboard, what speed it is there, what air pressure is in my tires, what area is going to have problems around, dashboard is there. Artificial intelligence, particular demand planning, very effective there. Risk management, ERPs, E-tools, cognitive tools. They're all coming up, they are simulating the human thing. That's what you're looking at. So these are the things you'll find in your book little more in depth, but I've given you some flavor of it. Market research, current competitions. So you need a business intelligence, analyze the KPIs, model the risk around. So in short, what I would say, the working style is going to change. Good old days are gone when somebody will give you a hard copy of the requisition. You will find supplier, you will make a POs, then you will send it and months and months to get the PO approvals around and then follow up. But now I think it's going out of order. Think of companies, the very top company which are doing very well is like e-commerce companies. If you're working in a very big companies, stock levels are there, minimum stock levels are defined, suppliers have been fixed already. The moment it reaches the minimum level, system knows. I've reached the minimum level, automatically it creates a purchase order to the supplier, which is with whom you have a long term agreements. So methodology is changing, approach is changing. Guys, so this was the one we have covered now the so far leadership and business acumen, which has got three competencies you could say around. Then we are covered on the technology part. The next one I'm taking is risk management, risk management. Now risks are there. Risk could be of quality. This could be of delivery. This could be after sales service. This could be the company from where we were buying has closed down. This could be anything. Else. But the risk part is visible to you. Keep in mind. You know the probability is this much. But the, there's another word called resilience. Now I think you should know it. It may not be much in your books because this is a new term which has come up now. But question could come on that. The resilience is a hidden thing. Even earthquake also has a risk. Growth. I know my country gets too much risk earthquake around. I get six, seven earthquake. I can plan for it. Anything which you know which is visible to you, the flood I know is visible to me. It may come this year, may not come next year, but I know it comes. 
I have to plan for it. The probability could be 5%, probability could be 10%, but there are something like COVID-19 nobody thought about. First time in 100 years. So that is what we call resilience. So risk management means you're covering those risks which are visible to you. Probability may be less and more, and then resilience is totally hidden. Like an iceberg under the water. Nobody knows what is inside. And suddenly it appears in 100 years. Identifying the risk, assessing the risk, and then I'll talk about the 40 in the next slides, review and report. Keep in mind the very first, can you tolerate it, the risk? If supplier I know is going to be delaying, but I've got a choice with me. Or my assembly line is stuck some way, even if it's delayed by one week, no worry. But some place I can't tolerate. That item is so critical, my whole assembly line can come to a standstill. So that means you cannot tolerate. Treat me, okay, now I've got a problem, what can I do? Can I go to someone else to help me? That's where your relationship will help you. Terminating, guys, okay, bad thing happened. I let me terminate the contract with the supplier and go to someone. Transferring the problem to someone. This we always teach in the business school. Never keep monkey on your shoulder. You'll never get a good sleep around. Pass the monkey to someone. The joke used to be whether should I delegate up or delegate down. Some people are damn smart. They can delegate to the bosses also. So if you are not understood, could you help us? So in short, they can have a good sleep and pass the monkey to the bosses. So there are many ways to pass the risk around. So you can tolerate it, you can treat it, you can terminate it and transfer it. I got you my four point T's. Now here is the risk which you can also link with this whole cycle. I intentionally put it. Risk could be in the indent management. Somebody has given a specification which are so casual. I want a legal advisor. What? What is going to do? Nobody gives you information. So that is a one. RFP, again, very weakly designed. Bid submissions, because the RFP is poor, bid also come very weird. Evaluation also, you have a biased mind already. In case you're doing e-auction, whether suppliers are cooperating with you, some suppliers are not willing to do e-auction, they don't know what e-auction is about. So risk is everywhere around. So this could be potential risk. So this is where the top risk around, supplier risk and quality, capacity. Supplier has told you, I can do, don't worry, sir, we'll manage it. But you know very well the capacity is only 10,000 pieces per week. And I've given an order for 15,000. This guy can't do it. The guy was talking big things. But the risk is there on the capability, capacity side, compliance side, and transportation costs. Good go up. And the lack of shifting to manage, staffing to manage. The guy doesn't know how to manage the staff at all. Staff is always going on strikes. So those could become your risk also. And now the risk has got expanded actually. Earlier I was going with one supplier and that supplier were doing everything vertically integrated. Now suppliers are also become, tier one supplier become supply chain oriented. They go to tier two supplier. Tier two goes to tier three supplier. So at the end of the day, your supplier, which is tier one, depends on tier two. Tier two depends on tier three. Tier three maybe depending on tier four. It's a long chain. The problem could be a tier four and your tier one gets stuck and you get stuck. So you have to manage that part. And this is what we noticed in COVID-19 and I've faced myself personally when I used to outsource from the US to many of the Chinese company, we could see where the problem could happen. Okay guys, so this gives you the sources of risk, which all of you know, the disasters, epidemics, terrorist attacks, all blah, blah, is there. Risk framework, establish your objective set up. I know some companies never cared for it, but now they're coming up a separate function whose job would be to develop the risk framework and manage the risk in the organization. Or some people even call business continuity, continuity plan. It also falls under that. Establish objectives, 
identify the risk, assess the risk, evaluate, and last is monitor, monitor, monitor. And based on the feedback, go back. It's never ending. If you do one time exercise, it doesn't mean that my job is done. The risk can crop even after three months. The supplier was not a risk for me today, but after three months, I find there's a strike there. Our relationship between the two countries are bad. So tariff system has changed. That means my whole framework has to be reworked. Out. So you have to relearn and improve upon it. Risk and compliance, again, there are many tasks in this. I'll go through task by task. I've given you flavor already. Risk management programs, you have to have types of risk. I think I've given you fair ideas on what type of risk could be there. Analyze the risk around and control. Develop the risk mitigation plan. This mitigation means the previous chart which I showed you can be used very well. You have to plan the risk around, find the alternatives, share the risk with stakeholders. Keep stakeholders into confidence. Don't try to hide anything. If today you are hiding, information will come. Production guy will start crying one day. Then nobody will support you. So today if you feel there's a risk, share with them, try to find new ones. Maybe they cooperate you. They may help you. So implement a claim management program, failure to perform revenue. So if you're not able to perform, you must have remedies there. And this should be part of the contract. I know people were questioning even the contract terms called force measure. People were saying the benefit, force measure, what can I do? It's COVID-19. Under force measure, I can't deliver. You can't blame me. Now people have learned the lesson. People are trying to say, guys, there has to be remedies for that. There has to be penalties for that. So keep this factor in mind when you're drafting new terms and conditions in the new world now. Some people have got terms and conditions which were drafted 10 years back. So please relook at it. Implement and maintain a system of data retention. You have data. As you know you are accountable. Your data has to be managed. Data has to be classified. Now, some data are ATI, very critical, very crucial. Audit people will ask you for that. How did you decide to place an order on this? Some may not be so important. So keep in mind the data are very important. As it is in every organization, we are supposed to keep data for eight years, for audit purpose, for any purpose. Risk matrix, I think each one of those who are in the risk now, I know this new function will start in many companies. Some I know have already started around. I do have a chat with them all the time. So impact of the risk around, likelihood of the risk around, drawing the graph around, trying to see which are the one red one. If the red one, green one, then I'll try to take action on them. Try to develop my plans for that. So you will find the job nature is changing. In the past, there were no job like this. Now, there will be people whose job would be to do the risk matrix, come with a solution plan for the red one, for the green one, for the other one. Some jobs will go away because of automation, but the new jobs will come up with this. So keep in mind, jobs are evolving, things are changing. Risk and compliance, you might be having some hazard aside. You might be storing them, which are prone to fire. You're disposing them. And those are being disposed into the river, let's say. The river's water is getting damaged. People may die because of that. So there are environmental, environmental issues. 30, 40 years, nobody cared. Now, now people are becoming conscious. So when people are becoming conscious, the damages could be much bigger. So you have to be careful on those parameters. Tools and processes to measure, report, and improve. So again, one task, you might be having 10 pages on that, but the focus is how to make standard operating procedures. All of you who are at the senior level must be making standard operating procedures, SOP. But SOP has to change. When you get new technologies, new procedures, SOP has to change. Job also has to change. Analyze and resolve issues related to audit reports. Some companies which are big, they have their own internal audits. 
So they are able to care themselves, guys, we are wrong here. So we don't have to repeat this. Then there are external audits. And then we have gauge compliance. Are we complying with this? Compliance with what has been in the SOP. All of you got standard operating procedure. You got some financial controls. Like I have been given authorized, you can sign up to this. ERP has built in controls some, but some contracts, I still go out of the way. My company has set up a long-term agreement with company X, but I still feel, no, no, I want to go to this supplier because this supplier is better. I'm not complying with the con my long-term agreements. Another one is task assess, manage, monitor the risk of doing business with third party. Now this is what I explained to you earlier also. This was not there so far. India, it is picking up now, but not in the past much. Earlier, we were very vertically integrated. I'll go to one supplier for one X item and that's all. But now we are going to a supplier and supplier is going tier one to tier two, tier three. I remember one case when I was dealing with the one big project of around hundred million dollars and I was buying with the one supplier and again in those countries, days it was all China. And then we find deliveries happening delayed. Then I had to go to another tier two, tier three. So later on I learned in the US, you just can't live with one tier one. You have to keep an eye on what is happening at a tier two also. Sometimes I know many of you have the terms and condition. If they want to subcontract, I want to know the company. So this is very important nowadays. In the past, I can vouch for it. Many of you will not have bothered for it. But now, if you are contracting someone, you say, guys, if you are subcontracting, I want to know. So ISO 39000 is also there around now. Investigate fraudulence. Non-compliance implies. So there are some implies, which is, is they might be like some companies give you that you can't sign a contract about this value. They split the contract, particularly public sector. To avoid the process, long process. Their intention may be good. I'm not questioning. But there's a breach of confidence. Sometimes we do the rigging of the bids also offers. So we share the information to someone. So this is where it could have issues. So this one completes on the risk part. The last one I'm taking up, CSR. Corporate social responsibility. I had the experience after coming to India, one of the company I went down to Jamnagar. So I saw that Come, because you are part of the community. Community feel the guy, you are the biggest company in our areas around. We expect some business from you. We expect some job from you. So community, community, community. You want them to help them in schools. You want to give them good health centers around. So community expects something from you, particularly if you are a big company. Workplace, within the workplace, am I giving a healthy place? A lot of pollution is there, a lot of vapors are there, and that could affect the health of the people. Marketplace, and lastly, but not the least, environment. I'm polluting the environment. So you have to keep in mind, corporate social responsibility for the community also, where you live, where you sit up. And the workplace also for the people who are working in house, environment part and marketplace also. So this is where I try to explain a little bit more issues on this. Ethics and CSR. Let me try to explain the words around. Corporate social responsibility is there. Ethics is, as I was saying in the very beginning, when we used to go to the schools, even in childhood in the, in the KG level or whatever level you may call, Parents will tell you, don't speak lie, don't steal. They were the moral values, am I right? Each society has got moral values. Now those moral values are left to you. Even the gift somebody gives to you, if you don't accept the gift, oh, this is very bad, you're not accepting a gift around. But when you go to the corporate level, we convert those moral ideas into one ethics guideline. And those ethics guidelines become for the corporate world. I can tell you very really when I was in heading one function in, I was in Denmark at that time, I'm talking about 80s. 
At the end of the years, many suppliers will come with a drinks bottle. You know. We used to buy all the drinks bottle and then give it to the. We used to have on Christmas Day some raffles and then give it to them. But later on, slowly, slowly in 90s, when I say around, when I was in the US, they were the leader in this concept around. He says, guy, nothing do. Even I could not put the calendar of a particular supplier in my office. That means I'm favoring one supplier. So basically we came around, it came in the part of the guideline, ethic guideline, no gift. So then some people say, sir, it could be a pen or pencil. It's a gift of a low value, sir. Something like that, it came around. So ethics means basically saying right or wrong. The right or wrong could vary from society to society. I can understand that. In some society, it may be wrong. Some society may be right. What is wrong with it? They'll say. So that part at a corporate level, and particularly which are global companies, they develop their own guidelines, ethical guidelines. That's what they do. So this is where it gives you ethics and moral, I told you. Morals are your own principles. All of us, when we were kids, our parents taught us. You never tell lie, be always honest, never steal. But when we come to the corporate world, we develop the rules. We'll be dealing with 20,000 people, 50,000 people. Each one come from a different backgrounds, different nationality. The thing out is right for me, what is wrong with this? But then company has to come with this. What is right or wrong? They come with the ethics guideline. I hope this makes you clarity. Now coming back to the corporate social responsibility and ethics. So what we are doing is the very first, again, the key bullet I'm taking a four here in this one, four task, develop and implement code of business conduct. I hope all of you big companies, you have code of conduct. Actually, UN has done a wonderful job on this called UN Global Compact. So all big companies, they try to be part of the UN Global Compact, they sign to the UN. So when we say UN Global Compact, there are 10 principles that to abide by. One is about the human rights. Everybody has a right. Any person working in your organization, they have the right to say something. Anti-corruption. So if something is going corrupted way, then yes. Environment, environment, and labor staff also. You should not have a child labor. You should not discriminate the labor based on color and background, what they come from. Code of conduct. So the code of conduct also has been made by many companies around. So those who don't have it, we will be very happy to share with you. Standard code of conduct developed by ISM USA. We'll be very happy. I think those who are appearing for this exam, they will come across as a part of the book itself. Develop and implement a supply diversity. This is picking up. I know in the US we have a program called Certified Program on diversity part given by AS and USA. Initially, we never offered in India, but I know one or two people came to us that their company is supporting the diversity part. So diversity means they're looking into the minority people, they're looking at the women, they're looking at the small business. So they are the one who are trying to support that. Establish and monitor programs for sustainability and environment. At different levels, when I'm making an acquisition, I'll try to see if the specifications are environmental friendly or not. When I'm finding a supplier, I'll try to see my supplier is responsible or not environment. When I'm contracting with this guy, again, I'll look around the environmental part of our sustainability part also. And lastly, but not the least is again, safety, safety, safety. So again, ISO 14,000 is there around. That's what we do. Another two more issues on this, establish social responsibility program. I know many of you have developed it. I've seen many companies having a small team whose job is to develop, helping the local societies, schools, health centers, coaching them, teaching them the digital divide, helping them, giving them the computers around. So those who are deprived of this, they do help them. Another thing is also to keep in mind 
can we think of reusing some of the things? Some designs are such a nice one which use a recycled material. Instead of using the virgin material, I could say I want a recycled material. Keep in mind, reputation risk is the biggest thing. I remember one company, they're given shoemaking to one of the low cost countries around. No guidelines were being made, and it caught the fires around, around 10, 11 years back. And that became the story. And the stock market of that company, the big company, multinational, went down. And they lost billions of dollars. So keep in mind, it takes ages to make a reputation. It is for you, me, anyone's around. Reputation takes you ages. But to spoil it, it takes a minute. So please always take care of your reputation, whether in your personal life, either in your job also. So wherever you go, people know this guy is trustworthy. This company is trustworthy. If I take their product, I can close my eyes. It's wonderful. So that's what we need around. Matrix. You should have matrix to assess this around. And ethical moral obligations. So there's a word come ethical and moral, both. But companies have come with ethical guidelines. But morally also, it should give you happy that guys have not done anything bad. Implement policies to prevent discrimination and discrimination. I know this goes on still in the world, either on the age factor, or on the gender angle, or on the disability angle. The guy is disabled. How will the guy will work around? I was very happy to see somebody was sharing on the social media. One girl who got in Kerala, the driving license, she doesn't have hands. So the RTO refused to give them. He said, you don't have hands. She said, I can drive as good car like anybody else. She went to the Supreme Court and got it. So you can imagine around disability alone should not be the factor for discriminators. Color, religions, race, and sexual harassment, I think is a very important parameter nowadays in many companies and particularly since I've been with the UN, this was very, very important around. I've seen many senior people losing jobs just on this. Now coming back to the last slide, I would take up preparing for the exam practical tips. Again, I know maybe reputation who joined my earlier session. Don't panic. It doesn't help you. Focus on understanding concept. If you have understood the concepts, you're going to pass. Let me tell you. Concept does not mean cramming the words. I know in India, more we cram, we get more marks. If I ask the guy, X plus Y square is what? The guy will answer me all X square plus Y square. If I tell you, where do I use this? The guy doesn't know where to use it. But the guy has crammed the things because the book says that I've crammed it, I got 100% out of 100. I don't know the application. These certification, global certification, focuses on application, application. Flagging questions. Make sure to flag option to the flag. If you feel you have two good answers, flag them up, try to understand more. If you, you can always join. We have a WhatsApp group. There are many good people, volunteers, who are willing to help you, who have passed in a very good marks around in a very short time. We can share their names with you. You can talk to them. I think they'll be the best one on a peer-to-peer -peer learning. So prepare flashcards. I think this is a great thing, which I know you guys were doing in school, colleges, small notes, and you will read one day before all the notes are out. In American culture, we call flashcards in different colors, depending on importance around. Blue for catchy phrase, pink for key terms around. So I leave it to you, which color you like. So, and the whole presentation, what I made is based on flashcards to you all. I've taken the key points around and tried to explain you. Theory versus practice, again, same story. Time management, time management. And the more you practice, I think you'll be able to manage the time. Because there are sometimes the problem is the language. We're not used to that type of language in our questions, particularly when we appear in India exam. I will say even IIT exams, I did it long back. Very simple way, but uh, here it is a little more complex answer questions around. Lastly, which I would say you can experiment depending on person to person. Some people, the advice is given around that if you want your brain to be active, 
in the daytime, then sleep more. The wording which is there, I'm just quoting it in the one, extra sleep of one hour is better than one hour of study. You've been studying whole lifetime. So now on the one day before exam, I'm just talking one day before exam, sleep well one day before exam. I think it will help you. Well friend, with this, again, I want to thank you all and wish you a good luck in your CPA certification journey. Please send us your feedback. So this was my last one I can say did for exam one, two and three. So I hope this will help you all. So please take care and wish you all the best.